Hey there, Foundation staff. Site42 has gone through a huge growth spike. I was hoping to hit 1,000 subscribers by New Year's, but we jumped the gun and broke through on December 3rd. In celebration, I've collected questions from the SCP subreddit and the Site42 Discord server in what has come to be known as a YouTube tradition, the 1K Q&A. Question and answer, one after another, and in no particular order, one, two, three, go. Jack Everreds asks, what are your extended plans for the channel? So I have a lot of extended plans depending on how we grow. Fans of the channel will have heard about my prior film and theater background, and I have a lot of interest in essentially bringing mainstream level quality entertainment to our little corner of the internet. I want to evolve the content from audio only, which I can do all by myself, to audio with visuals, and then move even further to making live action short films and even an episodic live action series. Of course, being a performing artist, I have huge hangups about asking other artists to work for free. I've been asked to do it for the exposure too many times. So as the channel grows, I'm hoping a combination of ad revenue, Patreon patrons, and merch can lead to a place like Game Theory, Screw Attack, or Philip DeFranco, where I can hire people and we can start making things full time. Totally Not a Seagull asks, what was your favorite skip to narrate? Probably any of the funny ones. SCP-008-J cracks me up every time I get to break out that New Zealand accent. Pesterbot is a hoot. And SCP-4357-J, the devil who keeps trapping himself worse, is hilarious. And who could forget Mimetic Metal, which is SCP-22-J, or The Screaming Man! And the passive-aggressive meteorite is a blast when you get to the ending with the bad stage play actors. And yes, BSO-3, that includes Instigator. PP-58 asks, during the live streams, is it hard to get into a role or character knowing that people are watching? Most of the time, not really. I have a lot of practice with improvisational theater from my time in school and working with Team Dynamite Productions out of Tampa, Florida. Shout out. And riffing in front of people ain't no thing anymore. There are sometimes it can get a little embarrassing, such as the Cornucopia episode where I had to make gross bodily functioning sounds. But once you've done that, you can pretty much do anything. Asimov asks, what made you decide to do your very first dictation? I actually wanted to use the reading as a demo reel for voiceover work. I dabble in freelance now and again, and good news, I've gotten a couple jobs from it, so high five. Beantown Wastelander essentially says, yo, make it a podcast. That's a great idea. Right now, there is an early release podcast for $10 or higher patrons on Patreon, where they can hear them as soon as they're done rather than waiting for the release date. I should come up with an easy upload all my mp3s place so I can do that for the normal releases. Jack Everett asks, When and how was Site42 established canonically? I'm going to use this question to give you everything I know about my Site42 headcanon. It's not an official secure site on the wiki at this time. Maybe one day Site42 will gain fame and or infamy enough to be inducted. Until then, this is what I know for certain. Site42 is primarily an archive and broadcast site. I assume we are one of many satellite sites that beam backup documents to Site 1. We also have a small wing for research on safe and Euclid anomalies. Loosely, I also want Site 42 to be an extra dimensional transfer hub for use in moving skips from one site to another. Later on, when I write some fun original content, this will give me an excuse to use whatever skip I want in the story. As of writing, we currently contain SCP 3086 in a storage locker. And we have a dedicated wing we've built for Researcher Talaran to contain SCP-3999-J, God help him and our budget. I know that user Cyantrues also uses Site42 in their writings, and user A Random Day claims to be the site director of Site42, so I'm going to have to have words with our higher-ups about this discrepancy. Amazing Ellen asks, if you could switch bodies with any SCP, which would you pick? If I were going to be an SCP, I'd be SCP-008-J. Jeff is such a nice guy, and you get to see the world, what's not to like? Asimov asks, is there a special reason you chose the number 42? I'm a big fan of the Hitchhiker's Guide series by Douglas Adams. It's been said that 42 is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. Or at least, it's the funniest number. Witness asks, have you ever felt some sort of personal connection to any SCP or tale you've read? When fictional characters attack their creators, that's my personal aesthetic. 3999 is author versus fictional character. 3450 is a fanfic that steals your imagination through your original characters. And 3616 is a fictional entity that tortures writers who inflict body horror on their characters. I've written a lot of theater scripts and GM'd a lot of tabletop games. And if those characters came after me, I've got a lot of splaining to do. PB58 asks, how far in advance do you plan out the readings or do you do some of it spontaneously? 
I run it pretty spontaneously right now. I used to skim the main list until I found one that interested me, but nowadays I've got a long request list to draw from if I have no ideas for the moment. If something interests me, it jumps straight to the top of the list, and Patreon patron requests get that same cutting the line treatment at the beginning of each month. Buenos dias, Rat King asks, What do you think about the SCPs from different languages, like Russian, French, and Japanese? I actually need to get on reading and recording skips from the international branches. It's awesome that it's spread out so far, and they come up with really interesting concepts due to their different cultures. Whisper1 asks, Does the Black Moon howl? Yes! The Black Moon howls and its bane draws forth the hounds of the end, all shall burn in the black fires of the Jakra! PP58 asks, What do you look for when picking an SCP to record? In standard readings, I pick pretty much whatever interests me. I kind of aim for later series skips because they aren't as covered as the Heritage Collection, so I can give attention to newer stories. I also check the format. Sometimes the screwier ones aren't going to be good in an audio-video format. Sometimes, though, that's the kind of challenge-accepted moment that brings videos like 3999. Adapting that was a challenge, and I'm hecka proud how that came out. Jack Everett's asked, Can you spell I cup? No, you monster. How can you mock me for my lack of spelling prowess in my own video? Jerk. Not Spherical asks, Hey Sherm, what was your introduction to the SCP Foundation like? Sadly, I don't remember my first SCP or how I found the site in the first place. All I know is that I signed up for the site proper in 2015 sometime. I know that back then, I was mainly using the wiki for idea fodder for creatures and events in a Dresden Files tabletop game that I was GMing. Those were awesome, BT dubs. Yasi asks, Do you spell it S-K-I-P or S-C-I-P? For those who don't know, the word skip is used in casual conversation when you don't want to spell SCP over and over again. The quote, proper spelling is capital S, capital C, lowercase i, capital P. So in many formal titles, like my videos, I write it out that way. In my scripts for videos, I just type skip because ain't nobody got time for that. Jack Everheads asks, What off-main site division of the community is your favorite besides the Site42 Discord? Probably SCP Declassified subreddit and Discord. I'm a nerd. I like going in too deep on the stories. Amazing Ellen asks, You're locked up with no escape in a hostile SCP. Which one do you choose? If I gotta go, I pick SCP-871, Death by Infinite Cakes. Jack Everheads asks, What's your favorite SCP? That's a tie between 3043 and 3999. Sue me, I love meta. Also, 3086 because I wrote that one so I get to be biased. Jack and Asimov both asked about some behind-the-scenes videos about the editing process and my recording setup, respectively. So I'll gladly do that at some point. What better way to help people learn about the process and maybe see if this goof can do it, so can I with a little practice. Along the same lines, PP58 asks if there are any upgrades I'd like to make on my recording setup. I would love to effing upgrade my system. You'll see how hilariously low-tech I am in a future video. And if I had my way and a budget, some office space and a sweet Markiplier recording room is the dream. Modulum asks, What do you think is behind your recent growth and momentum? How do you plan to keep it going? If I were to guess, part one is my content. My biggest fret early on was that I was making these monster videos like 3999, Murphy Law, and Duke Till Dawn with sound effects and music and getting so few eyes on them. I'm not arrogant in saying I make the best videos ever, but I work hard and I do make good videos. The other part is probably flagrant self-promotion. Being an artist doesn't pay the bills most of the time by itself, but I've worked retail, commission sales, and as a dance teacher, which is 90% selling yourself and 10% teaching dance. I don't lie, I don't hard sell, but you have to put your content in front of eyes. I like to say, if you won't promote yourself, why should anybody else? Thankfully, the YouTube algorithm is based on people watching, so I've gone through a doubling in viewership three weeks ago, and then a second doubling last week. I'm going to keep putting out content, keep improving my craft, and hopefully that keeps the ball rolling. I've also got multiple secret ideas for videos that I haven't mentioned because I haven't nailed down the people to help me make them. As we get bigger, money is a great motivator. Again, don't work for exposure unless you really like slash want to work with that person. Penguinator asks, how do you balance work in the channel? Tenuously. The channel is currently priority four behind my wife, my day job, and paying freelance acting and voiceover work. As we keep growing, maybe it will take over priority 3 and 2. But until then, I hang out with my wife and she's off work, and I make YouTube stuff in between dance classes and other gigs. But I don't play as many video games as I used to anymore, that's for sure. As of this moment, I've spent 4 hours this morning writing scripts for YouTube videos. 
Yossi asks, So Sherm, do you have anything special planned for 1K besides this Q&A? <coughs> Um, uh, and that's a lot of them. Thank you so much for subscribing to Site42. We're going to keep on trucking and making more and more awesome stuff. Thank you for watching, and if you want to support the channel more, Patreon, Discord, and merch links are below. See you next time, Foundation staff.